Okay, welcome back to the workshop. I've just uh, opened up both the treadmill motors I picked up a few weeks ago. Obviously the treadmill's not around anymore because that was stolen, along with the van it was in. Anyway, this is the Green Master, the uh, replacement motor for the original blue on the uh, treadmill. And I was expecting, because I've heard a lot of good things about Green Master, and I was expecting it to be... Alright, once well, so I've got it, so I've tried it with some new brushes today and it, it blew. Though, looking at it now, it's kind of past, I'm not really not surprised. The, the content is in alright condition, but it is grazed and it is a bit nasty. And I kind of know why, because now I've got it apart, and see the positive terminal here is blown right through, and that's not focusing because the camera doesn't focus once you start recording. But, um, yeah, I'll probably put up a close up photo of that. But that's old, that's, uh, that's old, that's dirty, that's covered in new carbon dust. So that's blown through very earlier on in this motor's use. And, yeah, this time it blew and took the lovely new brushes I got and took a nice chunk out the corner there. Big flash, blew the 40 amp breaker that the uh, workshop runs on, which is, uh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, looking inside, the motor must have really heated up at some point. It's the only way I can explain this. It's, uh, there's glue all over this, and there's sprays of glue all the way down the inside of the magnet. Since that chip there, the, the chunk of magnet that's missing there is nowhere to be found, so that's an old damage as well. So this this motor is, oh, um, it, it's in terrible condition. I can't believe someone would sell this as a, as a replacement motor. You can see how much carbon muck there is all over it, the spray of glue up the inside, and yeah, I'm expecting what's happened is... It's actually not necessarily glue, but the adhesive, or whatever they cover the windings with, is heated up when the rotor's heated up. So there's been a lot of load, and it's heated right up, and the glue is melted and sprayed off while it's running, and there's, there's crap all over the bearings, and on the inside, it's in, it's in terrible condition. But then I opened up the uh, own brand motor that came with, that came with the uh, treadmill originally. The wiring there's fine. Head's fine. The magnets are immaculate. There's not even any overrun of glue around the edges, unlike the Green Master one. There's a lot of carbon dust on the end end plate, but I've never seen this in a motor before. I mean, it may be common. I don't take a, a lot of motors apart, but it's been balanced. The rotor's actually been balanced. They've actually taken you know, little V-cuts out of the, uh, I don't know what they do to the magnetic fields, but they've actually taken it out, to, I presume, to balance the motor, to give it, make it run better. And the coatings on all the windings are in beautiful condition. It's, it's a lo it, if you look at these, that is solid, it's intact. This is ragged and messy. The only bad thing about this, I and mean, this was supposed to be in the mill for three years before he uh, it, it stopped working and he had to replace it. And the, the commentator is in a very bad condition. It's scored, not deeply scored, but you can see it's got lines along the edges of each each bar. There's a few vertical scratches as well. I don't know if it's from removing it or not, but there's no, almost no debris at all. There's almost no dust at all. It seems to be entirely down to the commentator. And this motor core is just in, in beautiful condition. You know, there's a hole in the end to drill and tap it to get the flywheel off. But, uh, yeah, the man, I mangled trying to knock it out as well. But that's going to get cut, tied up. That is a beautiful, beautiful bit of engineering. That's one of the farmers I'm concerned. Anyway, so I don't, I'm not an expert on motors, but that seems appreciably good. I mean, if you compare the, even when I pulled the, uh, the bars out, the, uh, the long screws that hold the motor together, in lovely condition. Whereas, again, the ones out of the Green Master, they were caked in carbon soot. And the only way I'm going to get this motor working again is I obviously need to do the uh, commentator bars as well, get it cleaned up, get the air line on it just to blow all the muck out of it. Same for the head here. Somehow, well, these should, there's uh, little grub screws that hold in the, hold in the brush, brushes. So that's got to come out. So that wire's got to be replaced. So that means I've got to peel it open, recrimp that. Or solder it, or whatever. I'm actually, soldering wouldn't do soldering unless you have to be crimped. Uh, the cabling all needs to be replaced. 
And again with the Green Master, the, the earth wire comes to the outside of the motor from the inside. Which I know is a minor detail here, but see, this goes, it goes out the vent line there, and out of the vent hole. It's the outside there. It's, it's got a, the earthing connection marked, but again, we go back to the original own brand motor. It's not, it's on the inside. Which seems a lot tidier, a lot safer, you know, it's less likely to get damaged, less likely to arc. It's, ah. The only good thing is they, they both use the same brush size and they're both, uh, both the same uh, carbon cap size. Brush, brush cap size. These mo brushes, they don't look very new now, they've uh, been torched. Uh, these came from eBay, they were off a piece, they are off a hand, electrical hand tool, I can't remember it, it's uh, uh, the little bag that came in says Hitachi 44, that's not what they're advertised as. But these brushes are 17 by 7 millimeters. Whereas the brushes that came with the motors originally were, I think, f 6 and 15 and 6 and 16. And the slots for them are 7 and 17. So the motor the brushes were knocking around very loosely inside the... <laughs> brush holes. I think that's one of the reasons there's been so much wear on them. You can see there is a, a size difference, so the spring on the original, it's fairly loose. The spring on the replacement is a bit stiffer. It's not a lot stiffer, but it might make a difference. More pressure on the brush. So that's the worn one against the new one. There's not a lot of difference there. Whereas the one that came off the... wherever I put it... <sighs> the ones that came off the uh, original were longer, but a lot more worn. Um, but it might be worth it because, I mean, the replacement brushes for the uh, Green Master are incompatible. That there would be a pair of those new is £30, and the price for one of these was about £3.5. So it would be a really good thing if they work as well or better. Obviously, uh, I'm not going to find out if the motor's arcing like that anyway. But it's um, it's it's good. I mean, it's kind of take the same voltage, and it's since it's pulse width modulated, it won't be doing AC, but it will be doing a sort of pulsated voltage supply. So even if they are AC brushes, they're kind of running. Uh, I find it hard to think how they how they might uh, operate differently. So as long as they make the right sort of contact, they should work better. Uh, it's all guesswork though, I mean, won't, I won't know until I can get the uh, commentators ground down on the lathe. Uh, to do that, no, I need to make up some new lathe tools, because the old lathe tools that came with the lathe, are, you know, they're very basic and they are wearing down. I've got the little machinist handbook out up there, which has got all the right uh, rake angles and so on for making your own tools. Which again, I guess what? Because that the grinder doesn't have a uh, an angle on it. So, but yeah, that's that's uh, it's coming along. It's coming along. Step forwards, uh, like that. That's a step forward too. We've got a little, uh, little one of the prototypes. This I'm calling it Thunderbird One because the uh, the other one I've got on paper, which uses the nice the, the pair of 180 watt motors. Uh, that was going to be Thunderbird Two because it's going to be like the big carrier robot thing. The carrying big lumps of crap around. Uh, since this one here is just thrown together out of the golf cart axle and the same wheels I was using on the other one. It's bought the frame together, it's got a scooter's front wheel there, the well, it's quite a tiller from a bicycle. Here's the uh, pole uh, it's the steer uh, the handlebar goes on. I've lost the word. But yeah, I've got a big commercial 12 volt battery in there, and it does run. The battery's not secured on there, but it's sitting on a solid surface now. Anyway, it's, it's a complete throw together rig. Um, that will need an H bridge to run controls properly. I've tested it very briefly with a, a drill trigger control, but that got hot pretty fast, so it's, it's not meant to take. I think it's a 100, 120 watt motor on there. Haven't tested it, so again. Uh, obviously, if I want to convert this into a robot, I'm going to need something more sturdy than this. If you go to my blog, I've done a recent post trying to research uh, the legality of using these on public you know, highways, basically the pavement, you know, sidewalks, whatever. And 
the crazy thing is that if I uh, if I was to ride this, if it had pedals and I was using it, you know, as a bat- as a mo- electrically assisted, then I'd have no problem. I can ride that without a license, anything at all. It's below 200, 250 watts, and definitely below 12 miles per hour top speed. However, if I took this and had it going along, but I was towing, sort of guiding it along with the handle, you know, had a control on the handle, I was walking along it, then I would need a full driver's license. Which is kind of insane. But then, again, since there are uh, remote control cars which are a lot more powerful than this, I've seen uh, the one-fifth scale Barger uh, remote control car is about the same footprint as this, and it's got a 5,000 watt motor in it. And you don't need any sort of license to drive that. It seems that the entire point of the law coming down to it's called a Class K vehicle um, is a pedestrian operated vehicle. It seems to be entirely if you're in physical contact with the vehicle to control it. But you're not actually riding the vehicle. If you're riding the vehicle, you don't need a license. However, if you're guiding the vehicle by walking alongside it, then you do need a driving license. And this is getting the same sort of law that means that segways and uh, electric scooters are illegal in the UK because they're they're not a current existing classification of vehicle. Um, because of that, they can't be used on pavements because they are definitely not the type that's allowed on pavements. But at the same time, they're not road vehicles uh, because. They're not designed to go on the road, so they can't pass the classification tests, they can't pass the registration tests to go on the roads. So, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, they're an illegal vehicle, you can't use them in the UK. And some poor sod uh, in Suffolk, I think it was, got uh, arrested on that, because he bought a Segway and took it on the pavement, and the police came along and said, sorry, you can't use that on the pavement, because it's uh, a motor vehicle. Uh, so he took it onto the road, and like, oh, well, that's uh, not registered as a car, so you're under arrest now for taking an unregistered vehicle onto the roads. And, yeah, he's only got to find a few, hun- few hundred pounds, but, um, yeah, Segway costs, like, five thousand pounds. If you go to the Segway's, um, is a, a legalise the Segway campaign for the UK, they've got a terrible thing on the website, though, which is, um, comparing the Segway to the, uh, comparing it to the, you know, the pedal assist bicycles, pet electric bicycles, um, which is a kind of an unfair comparison, really, I feel, because, as I said, the uh, pedal-assisted electric vehicle, or an electrically-assisted pedal vehicle, has a uh, maximum motor wattage of 200 watts, or 250 to the tricycle. And the Segway, as best I can find out, has two two-horsepower motors in it, which would make it nearly 3,000 watts, which is kind of in a completely different category. But, of course, the whole motor wattage thing is completely useless because the whole thing really comes down to what the top speed is. It could have, you know, a 100-watt motor in it. It could have a 1,000-watt motor in it. If it's limited to 12 miles an hour, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference, except in, you know, the weight of the person it can carry and obviously how fast it can accelerate. But its top speed remains unchanged. It's, it's a ludicrous bit of a uh, law that I've can't help but feel is keeping you know potentially not necessarily not, not crucial to the world as it is but keeping a useful development in personal transport off the road I mean if it's, it is just like a tiny electrical scooter say a scooter under 50 kilos then yeah limit it to 12 miles an hour any amount of power you like why not use it on the pavements use it on private ground just you know Throw it up at the. Oh no, just maybe not taking the pavements. Pavements are for people, but you know, give it the same classification as a bicycle. And bicycles can go a lot faster than 12 miles an hour, but they can still get pulled over. In if you're acting like a dick on a bicycle on the road, then you get pulled over for dangerous driving or whatever. But maybe not dangerous driving. Anyway, yeah, the motors are going to be spruced up. I've got the heart rate monitors down there, which are being well, they're not doing anything. It's got the, a separate little daughter board which does the monitoring. I'm just clear. I'm supposedly clearing up in here. It's a correct tip at the moment. I've got all the uh, electronics for the treadmill up on a separate board here, so they're easier to control. I stripped the wires down, reconnected the loose cabling, and yeah. Oh, well, I guess we'll move on, see how it develops. 
Yeah, those sort of pictures now. <laughs>